tonight on The Final Play. Oh, there it is. Yeah. The first family of Louisiana football kicks off 20 years of the Manning Passion Academy. Why Peyton, Eli, Cooper, and Archie Manning continue to make their annual trek down to Thibodeau. And find out what one Super Bowl winning quarterback expects from his NFL team in 2015. Plus, the Saints are inching ever so closer to reporting for training camp. We continue our Fox 8 Top 20 countdown with players 15 through 11, including one Saints standout who may not remain on the roster when the regular season begins. And the Pelicans tipped off NBA Summer League ball this weekend, using Alvin Gentry's up-tempo style to pile up the points and a pair of wins. We'll hear from the Pels' best player so far, one looking to carry on a family legacy. The final play begins right now. From Fox 8 Sports, this is the final play with Chad Sabaty. Brought to you by your Southern Quality 4 dealers and Oceana Grill. Welcome into the final play. Celebrating its 20th anniversary this summer, the Manning Passing Academy continues to teach and motivate young players. And the first family of Louisiana football has never lost sight of their goals. NFL stars Peyton and Eli Manning, along with older brother Cooper and dad Archie, are always the first to arrive and last to leave. They set out to teach proper fundamentals of the game, help explain offensive and defensive schemes, and assist the youth in fully realizing their potential, whether it's a top recruit or someone just learning the game. With 1,200 campers this past weekend, the Manning Passion Academy has certainly come a long way from when it first kicked off two decades ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Speed. Speed. 20 years, and the Manning Passion Academy is still going strong perhaps much stronger than its founder, Archie Manning, ever envisioned. I thought we'd be a regional, you know, just a regional camp, maybe get three or 400 kids. I didn't think we'd be doing it 20 years later. But it's not just dumb luck that the Academy has been such a huge success over the years. Name recognition goes a long way, and the Mannings have become a household name across the nation. NFL quarterbacks Peyton and Eli Manning say it's because the camp's message never changes. There's nothing um, probably earth shattering uh, that we're teaching. We're teaching the basic fundamentals and techniques that I think you need to, to, to be a, uh, a successful quarterback at any level, tight end, running back, receiver. So yeah, we, we encourage the kids to come back You know, every year. They're gonna hear a lot of those same coaching points. They're gonna hear a lot of the same stuff and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna drill the, the, you know, the mechanics, the, doing the, the little things correctly. Um, you know, teach respect and, and doing things the right way. Uh, a lot of it's a hard work. Preaching that same message year after year is also what attracts the many quarterbacks that are here as counselors. 20 years ago, former Saint quarterback Jake DeLone was a part of the camp's first handful of counselors. First year at Tulane, I think 175 kids or something like that. Uh, you know, I was more nervous about meeting Archie Manning. You know, here I am, a 19 or 20 year old, whatever it may be, at UL, getting to meet Archie. And, and Peyton, I get, you hate to say it, Peyton wasn't Peyton at that time. He was the quarterback from Newman that myself and Josh Booty, we'd battle every week to see who would lead the league, lead the state in yards. I mean, that, that's, that's who Peyton was in my eyes. And, you know, um, the best quarterback at the camp was a soon-to-be freshman named Eli Manning. It was, it was, he was better than anybody else. We were there young, working. I remember I taught the screen pass at that camp. That's what I was teaching. And, um, and then just to see it keep growing and guys coming back, guys come through the years. And uh, it's like a big fraternity, and it's so great to come back. Today, guys like Mississippi State's Dak Prescott are here. And so is Tulane's Tanner Lee who's taking advantage of his time with the Mannings. Every chance I get, I, I try to talk to them about, you know, just little things and especially how they um, how they approach their teammates and just uh, tons of different questions, anything I can think of. You know, you got you to, gotta, um, it's just invaluable information. During the camp's inaugural year in 1996, only four coaches took part on Tulane's campus. This weekend at Nichols State, that number swelled to 39 with everyone wearing one of these shirts, passing along the same message. We tell them, you know, we, we can teach you the drills, and in these three days you can get a little bit better, but if you just, you know, if this is all you work on all summer, you're not going to get better. You got to keep working these drills. You got to keep working these things. And so we try to give them a, 
um, you know, kind of a plan to getting better. And we're trying to make the JV uh, quarterback uh, have a better freshman year, uh, just like we are trying to help the junior or senior. If they go on to play college ball or, uh, you know, possibly pro ball, that's great, but that is certainly not the intention. This camp, as you know, is, is not about recruiting. It's not about three-star, four-star, five-star players. We have good players come here. Um, we don't track them. Uh, our whole mission is to enhance the experience uh, of a high school football player. While Peyton and Eli Manning are back in Louisiana for their annual Passion Academy, they're teaching up-and-coming players that the dropback quarterback is still relevant. With more and more teams running spread offenses with dual threat signal callers, some say that traditional pocket passers are on the decline. However, Peyton Manning is still one of the NFL's very best and now enters his 18th season this fall. Peyton says he doesn't think the pocket passer is going away anytime soon. We, you know, obviously teach him option. We certainly teach a lot of the shotgun. So, you know, we're certainly trying to teach, you know, what's being run out there with the spread offenses. At the same time, sticking to a couple of core principles of throwing on the run, good play action fakes, how to run a good screen as a quarterback, how to take a good three-step draw, how to take a snap from under center. You know, I, you know, I still see some guys that come into pro ball that, you know, in, in a mini camp or whatnot that have never taken a snap from center. And, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's something's probably not right about that, you know, I think. And so at least, you know, if they come to this camp and they go into pro ball, at least they can say, hey, I have taken a snap from under center for three days down in Thibodeau, Louisiana. So I, I think there's some core principles that always kind of need to be taught, especially to a young player. While Peyton is approaching nearly 20 years in the NFL, younger brother Eli is gearing up for his 12th campaign and now second straight with former Newman and LSU Tiger standout receiver Odell Beckham Jr. 12 of Eli's touchdown passes last fall went to OBJ and with a now healthy Odell Beckham, Eli Manning says his New York Giants are poised for a very productive offensive season. Well, I'm looking forward to the second year just being, being in this offense, a new, new offense and having Odell in there, uh, healthy for a full year, having Victor Cruz back, uh, Ruben Randall, another LSU guy. So uh, I feel like we got a lot of weapons on the offense and, and so excited about the opportunity to get them the ball and, and uh, scoring a lot of points. Coming up next on the final play, we continue our countdown of the top 26 with players 15 through 11. How many defenders from Rob Ryan's group are in the mix and how much of an impact can an aging offensive weapon have this fall? Find out after the break. You're watching the final play. In just two and a half weeks, the Saints will report to the Greenbrier Resort up in West Virginia for training camp 2015. The first preseason game between New Orleans and the Baltimore Ravens is right over a month away on August 13th. But before the black and gold suit up to battle the opposition, they will first look to build that team chemistry and a new foundation for what they hope is a playoff bound season. The talent is there once again, and we continue our Fox 8 Saints Top 20 Countdown this week with players 15 through 11. At number 15 is safety Kenny Vaccaro. The Saints' first-round pick of 2013 followed up a stellar rookie season with a sophomore slump in 2014. Vaccaro just wasn't the same player last year and even admitted he missed more tackles last year than he had in his entire football career. This tough year even got him benched for a short time. He finished with 74 tackles and two interceptions. However, last year is in the past. And this year, the Saints are hoping Vaccaro will be back to his aggressive, productive ways. He'll get some help with some better personnel in the defensive backfield. None bigger than Jarris Bird. But it will be up to him to return to form. Coming in at number 14 on our list, is number 12, the quiet storm, Marcus Colston. Colston's resume in the decade he's been here in New Orleans needs no explanation. He's the club's all-time leader, receptions, touchdowns, and receiving yards. However, Colston even admitted that 2014 was a down year. Though he played in all 16 games, he finished with just 52 catches, 902 yards, and five touchdowns. Plus, he had more drops last year than he ever had in his entire career. 
and just never quite looked right. This offseason, he even took a pay cut to continue his career in New Orleans. But like most on the team last year, everything about 2014 is in the rearview mirror. Up ahead in 2015, Colston's veteran leadership will be counted on more now than ever before. Behind him and Brandon Cooks are complete unknowns at the position, which means he'll have plenty of opportunities to bounce back. Coming in at number 13 is another 2006 draftee, guard Jari Evans. Evans has been a perennial pro bowler and all pro since he's been here in New Orleans. But 2014 was not his best season. Evans battled injuries all year long. In the offseason, speculation swirled that Evans may be gone. But ultimately, he signed an extension. In 2015, he'll be back at his familiar right guard spot protecting the interior of the offensive line, an area so crucial for Drew Brees. At 32 years old, Evans is one of the most seasoned veterans on the team. They'll need that veteran experience. They'll also need him to return to the form that they know he can be. Coming in at number 12, defensive tackle Akeem Hicks. Hicks has perhaps the biggest motivation of all along the defensive line. He's entering a contract year in 2015. Like most on the Saints defense, 2014 was a step backwards for Hicks. One year after recording four and a half sacks, his production dipped to just two sacks last year and 42 tackles. Plus, he lacked his usual disruptive ways in the middle of the defense. The Saints need him to be the force he once was. A big year could mean big money for big hicks and big things for the Saints defense in 2015. Here's Glenn and he's going to go down the safety and checking in at number 11 is outside linebacker junior galette galette had a horrific offseason an arrest an injury a video and an alleged beach brawl all drew the ire of the organization and the fan base and his antics have his future in new orleans very much in doubt however as of now he is a saint and possesses a coveted skill set on the defensive side of the ball. Gallette is the best pure pass rusher on the team. In 2013, he had 12 sacks. Last year, he recorded 10. Gallette must unleash his aggression on the field on Sunday and must learn to tame it off the field. If he can do that, he may still be around. If he can't, he may be gone. If you were to draw up the prototypical ideal NFL quarterback, he would not look like Drew Brees. However, his six-foot status surely has not prevented him from standing tall amongst his peers around the league. Brees is the second shortest quarterback in the NFL behind Seattle's Russell Wilson. His accolades here in New Orleans are second to none. Super Bowl MVP, multiple 5,000-yard seasons, owns every passing record in franchise history. Clearly, his size has never been a hindrance to Breeze becoming elite. And he says he had the perfect mentor early in his career in San Diego on how to play with size limitations. I never thought twice about that, um, about my height or, or anything else, because I, I couldn't. I couldn't control those things. You know, the only thing I could control is, you know, what I did on the field and what I did with those opportunities. I would say this, you know, I, <clears throat> I did have Doug Flutie, you know, I, and, and I think Doug, Doug's kind of one of these underappreciated guys. Um, he played 20 plus years of professional football at a very high level. Yes. Going back to the USFL, to the NFL, to the CFL, back to the NFL. And, um, you know, he was in San Diego when I first arrived in San Diego. So I had four years with Doug Flutie. And I learned a tremendous amount uh, of football from Doug. And I watched the way that he navigated the pocket and kind of, you know, slid for vision and threw the ball through lanes. And, I, I mean, I, I always admired that. And I, I always felt like he was one of the best I'd ever seen. While training camp is still a few weeks away, the NBA's summer league action has already tipped off. And the New Orleans Pelicans have fans buzzing about new head coach Alvin Gentry's style of play. We'll have highlights of the team's victories and a feature on one up-and-coming player trying to play through the high expectations of an NBA family tradition. The final play continues after the break. You're watching The Final Play.
The New Orleans Pelicans tipped off summer league play out in Las Vegas Friday, facing the Milwaukee Bucks. New Pels head coach Alvin Gentry's up-tempo style was on display. Seth Curry, the younger brother of league MVP Steph Curry with the shot. Later, Victor Rudd spots up for three. The Pelicans launched 29 three-pointers in this game. They made 11. Rudd finished with 17 points. Then Curry again buries the triple this time. He was feeling it. Late game action, a steal from Seth Curry leads to another lay-in to give him 30 points for the night. Game high as the Pelicans win 101-89. to Then on Saturday, Alvin Gentry had a front row seat at two straight wins. Early action, Larry drew the second for three. That's good, and the Pels had an early 20-12 to lead. Second quarter action, Seth Curry from deep, his lone three-pointer of the day, plus the foul, puts New Orleans up by 11. End of the first half, Curry with the nice assist to big man Jarvis Varnado, who gets the alley-oop lay-in to go. Pels led 52-44 at the break. Third quarter action, still a close game. Fuquan Edwin drives and connects off the glass for two of his 14 points. Pelicans up 68-63. Next possession, Curry with the leaner, gets that to go, a seven-point lead. And finally to the fourth quarter, Curry looking to close it out for his team, gets the finger roll to fall. Then Curry again with the attacking lay-in. He finished with a game-high 25 and has now scored 55 points in the team's first two games. Pelicans win again 90-86. to New Pelicans head coach Alvin Gentry said his team was going to be fun to watch. And with 191 points in two summer league games, it's clear to see that the Pels will aim to be one of the higher scoring teams in the entire NBA next season. Superstar forward Anthony Davis officially signed his five-year $145 million contract extension this past week, while the franchise also re-signed free agents Omer Ashik, Alexia Jinsa, and Dante Cunningham. Continuity is key, but Gentry also appears to have found a diamond in the rough in Seth Curry, the star of the Pelican Summer League action so far. The Curry name is synonymous with NBA sharpshooters. From older brother Steph, who just led the Golden State Warriors to the NBA championship, to father Dell, regarded as one of the league's all-time best shooters. For 24-year-old Seth Curry, he can't worry about trying to match what his family has done. He can only be himself. It's not tough for me uh, at all. I mean, I've, I've had that growing up with my father, uh, playing in the NBA, and then Steph at a different level. Uh, I mean, I'm just being who I am. That's, that's for other people to deal with, uh, the shadow and things of that nature. I just go out and, and be who I am, uh, play the way I play, and, and just and control what I can control and let everything else handle itself. Through two NBA Summer League games, the youngest Curry has led the Pelicans to a pair of wins while pouring in a team-best 55 points. He's second among all Summer League scorers with 27 and a half points per game. But he's also added eight rebounds, five assists, and seven steals. Yet even Seth Curry knows he can continue to get better. I mean, I'm just steady. I mean, I don't know. I'm just going out there uh, keeping the same mentality the whole game, uh, being aggressive, trying to make the easy plays, not, not force too much. And just take the shots I know I can make and make plays for other people. So uh, that's the, it's, keep it pretty simple offensively and on defense, just uh, being uh, aggressive and making and being a pest with my hands and things of that nature. I'm not impressed. I expected this. I mean, he's good, and this is who he is. He's an NBA player. I mean, it's impressive, yeah, but it's not, not anything I didn't expect. He's a really good player. And Seth knows that to earn a spot on the Pelicans' regular season roster, he has to find ways to make an impact even when his long-range shot is not falling, connecting on just three of his 16 attempts from beyond the arc. Just keep being aggressive. I'm not shooting as well as I want from the three-point line, but I, mean, it's, oh, uh, I think people know I can shoot. I think it's just a matter of making different plays on and off the ball. As long as we're doing it in winning effort, man, I, mean, I think we play well. So, I mean, if I'm uh, doing making bad plays over that nature, we'll show on the scoreboard. But I think uh, for the most part, being aggressive defensively and getting out on the break and, and helping us score in easy transition transition ways is, is how Coach Ishii wants us to play. So I think it's a tempo fast. And, and it starts with me and Larry doing that from the uh, 
guard position. He's got good pedigree in that area. When you look at his dad and you look at his brother, uh, you know, he's been able to play. I, I thought he, he, he had everything under control. Uh, made a great play at the end and just simply missed a layup. But, uh, you know, walked to the line and make two free throws. I, I think he's playing with so much confidence right now. And the, the thing that I've been most encouraged with this team, the Summer League team, is that they're playing at a pace that we want to play at, you know. Uh, they shoot the ball well. I mean, they shoot the ball very good today. They had a 90 points yesterday. Uh, shot it okay. They didn't shoot it great. Had 101 points. So, um, that to me is the biggest thing right here. If we can continue to do that, and then, as I said to them in the locker room, if we can transfer that over to the varsity team, then uh, I think we'll be in good shape. The Pelicans will hit the hardwood again tomorrow for game three of Summer League Ball. But when we come back, it's time to talk college football. Award watch lists are out. Find out which LSU Tigers are receiving national recognition before the 2015 season begins. You're watching the final play. Big things are expected out of LSU star sophomore running back Leonard Fournette this season. Last week, Fournette was placed on the Paul Horning Award watch list that honors the nation's most versatile player. Fournette is a preseason All-American who enjoyed a phenomenal freshman year, rushing for a school record 1,034 yards and 10 touchdowns. He also returned kickoffs for the Tigers. The Horning Award is just one of many awards Fournette could win with a stellar season. He is perhaps LSU's first serious contender for the Heisman Trophy since quarterback Jamarcus Russell back in 2006. A trio of Fournette's LSU Tiger teammates are also on college football watch list. Both senior safety Jalen Mills and junior linebacker Kendall Beckwith are candidates for the Bronco Nagurski Trophy, given out to the nation's best defensive player. Tiger teammate Vidal Alexander is on the Outland Trophy watch list, along with Tulane's Chris Taylor. The Outland Trophy is presented to the nation's top interior linemen. From LSU football to a former baseball great, the Tigers once second baseman DJ LeMayu, now of the Colorado Rockies, was selected to the National League All-Star team as a reserve. So far this season, LeMayu has hit 309 with 11 doubles and four homers in 84 games. He also won a gold glove back in 2014. LeMayu was a member of the 2009 LSU National Championship team. He was originally drafted by the Chicago Cubs later that summer. The All-Star Game is set for this Tuesday night, July 14th, up in Cincinnati. Thanks for watching this week's final play. Our next newscast begins at 4.30 a.m. Have a great night. The final play was brought to you by Southern Quality Ford Dealers and Oceana Grill.